Uh, you know, I like Sephiroth, but I think my main is still Shulk. Time to put some practice in. Why are all the white-haired anime boys shirtless anyway? Welcome back to The Breakdown everyone, today we're going to be breaking down Sephiroth. In case you're not familiar with The Breakdown, we're going to be looking at what Sephiroth does in various stages of the game. There are already plenty of resources that talk about Sephiroth's position in the metagame, some tricks, but nothing really that talks about his overall game plan. So that's what we are going to delve into. We're not going to go too in-depth because the meta is still developing. However, we are going to discuss some of the things that you need to know if you want to get started with Sephiroth. Without any further ado, let's get into the breakdown of Sephiroth. Sephiroth is defined by two things, his frame data and his range. These form the basis for everything you do and all of the actions you take. Sephiroth, because of his lacking frame data, lacks the ability to really win like interaction to interaction. He more so plays to a strong strategy and ensures that he puts himself in situations that are advantageous for him. Sephiroth generally focuses on coverage, preemptive coverage, and then shifts to a more commitment and read-based playstyle when the opponent commits themselves to get around his walling aerials. Sephiroth is extremely good at punishing commitments with a read, and can really blow his opponent up if he has the right idea. Overall, I would say he's strategic, punishing, and has a lot of comeback potential with one winged angel mode. That said, let's talk about his actual game plan. We're starting up with the neutral, then we'll get into his advantage, and finally his disadvantage. Let's start off with the neutral. Sephiroth is a mid-range monster. He doesn't really have much that he can do with long range, and his close range is limited at best. However, at the mid range, he is extremely strong and this is the ideal that you kind of always base your play around. Knowing this, we know that Sephiroth always tries to close the gap from a long range to a mid range. This is where one of his first advantages shines through, range. Even though he doesn't really have the mobility to close the gap, because of his range, he doesn't need the mobility to get into his ideal mid to long range. Because his mid to long range is so well controlled, he can control an area that other characters do not have a lot of control over at all. This then allows him to control how he enters the mid-range and how their opponent enters the mid-range as well. That said, in matchups where he struggles to enter this mid-long range because of projectiles, etc, etc, he can really struggle. Think about something like Zelda's Phantom, but also a Samus Charge Shot. On the other hand, characters that can close the gap faster than he anticipates can also be a struggle. While he tries to control the mid-long range, these characters have already closed the gap further. Think about something like Pikachu, Sheik, or other rushdown characters. In other words, entering this range is a mind game in and of itself. If your opponent is advancing, you better have retreated preemptively. Keep in mind, Sephiroth doesn't really have the frame data to have a plan B. He needs to consider these factors beforehand or else he's already in that close range scenario where he doesn't really have a hitbox to really pick up the slack. However, when you do keep these factors in mind beforehand and you start retreating preemptively, you do give up stage control and if someone doesn't commit to an approach, you've now put yourself in a deficit as you inch ever so much closer to the corner. This creates the first mix-up where he either has to preemptively cover space or preemptively retreat. So talking about covering space, uh, Sephiroth has an amazing low short hop to really adjust which space he wants to cover. By retreating or advancing, he ever so slightly adjusts his ideal spacing, but these small adjustments can lead to large consequences. Overall, his low short hop combined with the ranges as forward air and back air allows him to control a horizontal mid-range space very well. However, his lackluster speed means that sometimes you cannot adjust as much as you want to, which then ties back into the weakness we talked about before, where fast characters can really close the gap on him. Of course, his weakness is mostly mitigated in a one-winged angel mode, where he gets enhanced mobility. This is gonna be a pattern where a one-winged angel compensates for a lot of his weaknesses, but more on that later. Generally, when controlling this mid-range horizontal space, you have to choose between forward air and back air, and it's mostly a matter of where you want your sweet spot to be. If someone is more of an approaching type of player, I recommend Becker since the sweet spot is more towards the middle, which allows you to compensate for people who try to approach you faster than you wanted to. 
Forward air is a better tool if someone stays away, where the sweet spot is at the very end and you can get some really devastating hits by spacing your forward air. Overall, I generally recommend using back air over forward air, since the sweet spot has a little bit more vertical reach to it, which can really help you out when catching jumps. Talking about forward air and back air, we get to the second mix-up, which is controlling vertical space. We talked about how good his low short hop in tandem with his forward air and back air is at controlling horizontal space, but one of his weaknesses is that he has a little bit more of a struggle covering vertical space. While Sephiroth can commit to a vertical coverage with up air, or up smash, or even full hop rising aerials, these are not the greatest. Instead, I recommend one of two ways to deal with vertical approaches. One option is to use your platforms. Sephiroth's full hop height is perfect for getting to a platform, and as such you can use a full hop rising back air to cover diagonal approaches very well, after which you land on a platform which really limits how risky this move is, and you can even drop through with another aerial to continue covering space. The other option is to use your movement to turn a situation into a more horizontal one. By moving away from your opponent you prevent them from landing on you, and then you open up with punishes with for example down tilt, forward tilt, or side B on their landing. This option is a little bit more limited in your normal mode where you don't really have the greatest mobility, but with one winged angel again, you really get to get a lot more leverage out of this tactic. Finally, there's the burst range mix-up. Whereas we talked about preemptive coverage and preemptive movement to really counterplay your opponent's aggression, you can also do so with your burst range. This really calls people out who advance a lot expecting you to retreat, and generally messes up a slower game pace with this strong burst range. You can use tools like dash tech which has amazing range, but even down tilt and to some degrees up e can be a strong tool at intercepting your opponent. Combining these three tactics is the core of Sephiroth's neutral. Preemptive horizontal coverage, diagonal compensation, and burst range mix-up. Should these tactics go wrong, Sephiroth usually enters a close range where he is not the strongest character. He usually relies on system mechanics to get himself out of the situation. Think about full hop, shields, ball dodge cancel, rolls, stuff like that to really help him compensate for the fact that he doesn't really have the inherent tools to deal with being in this situation. One final thing to realize is that when you're walling your opponent out and they close the gap, they might realize that they can get walled out. At that point, they will shield and you can use that time to really start pressuring your opponent with neutral air. Neutral air is his most rewarding aerial and due to his relatively low landing lag and startup also transitions into Shomahawk mix-ups the most smoothly. Think about empty landing grab, empty landing tills, empty landing rising neutral air. All these options are really great at mixing up your opponent if they do approach you and commit to shield because they feel like they're not in a good position. Overall, Sephiroth controls the neutral well, though not by dominance, but by coverage and implied threats. What that means is that Sephiroth has to rely on reads. While his vertical coverage is not the greatest, he can commit to punishing it hard with an up air or an up smash. Conversely, he is opened up to reads very well himself. If he wants to wall his opponent out horizontally and they're ready for it, they can easily parry uh, landing aerials. As such, Sephiroth has to make use of his low short hop to mix up his landing, do an empty landing down tilt, forward tilt, etc, etc. In other words, keep mixing it up. If you become too predictable, you cannot wall them out, and if they become too predictable, you can get those hard punishes, and that's going to limit their options further, and then your coverage really shines through. Sephiroth's advantage is a bit of a mixed bag. Sephiroth doesn't really have combos and often relies on single hits that put their opponent in a bad situation. These are weird situations to navigate though. Because of Sephiroth's poor frame data, he generally opens himself up to reversals. To beat these reversals, he needs to cover them preemptively, meaning that a lot of advantage state is preemptive coverage with a rare read to mix it up. However, this coverage can then be beaten with patience, in which case you are forcing Sephiroth to commit to his advantage. However, when he commits, he is open to this reversal again because his frame data isn't the greatest. And this creates a weird sort of scenario where as a Sephiroth player, you can go for coverage, however, it's less successful. And then if you go for a read, you're more open to reversals. As Sephiroth, keep this in mind when creating an advantageous situation. And when playing against Sephiroth, keep this in mind to keep him guessing and ensure that his advantage state does not snowball out of control. In terms of juggles, I think Sephiroth really shines when he can catch a landing. Yes, he has two really good tools to chase with up air and back air, however these are both very committal. Especially up air where people can often jump away from the up air and due to the laggy nature of it, they get out of the juggle by double jumping, which is very rare. As such, I generally recommend only chasing when you have a hard read or when your opponent has exhausted their resources, in which case your up air actually becomes an amazing tool because it covers so many options, same for your back air. Instead, I think his baseline for juggling is catching landings. 
between his amazing range on his smashes, sometimes even super armor on them, as well as forward tilt, down tilt, side B, and even sometimes counter. He's really, really great at catching people as they're trying to land. As such, I generally recommend trying to catch a landing and as a mix-up, chase them out of the air. Offstage is very similar. Sephiroth doesn't really have oppressive offstage due to his lack of sweeping or lasting aerials. This makes it relatively easy to get past his aerials with a double jump, fastball, or air dodge mix-up. Where Sephiroth shines is when his opponent has to recover. Between an offstage counter, an onstage counter, a down air two frame, or a down smash two frame, he has a lot of tools to deal with someone trying to get back to the ledge. Should they make it back to the ledge, I would say that Sephiroth's ledge trap is above average, however not the greatest. The jury is still out on how good neutral B is. As we mentioned before, he's really good at preventing people from getting to the ledge, and when you do charge a neutral B, you're sacrificing that advantage, and the timing is overall pretty hard to get right because of how slow it comes out. That said, when you do get the neutral B set up, you are forcing your opponent into specific timings and preventing them from jumping. This leaves them generally with normal getup, getup attack, and roll. This is obviously extremely strong. However, as we said before, we're not sure how consistent this is going to be against most characters that can mix up their recovery, as well as recover faster than others. Think about something like Zero Suit or Shulken and Jumbo Nato. If you do not manage to set up the neutral B, I recommend a more standard ledge trap with a focus on stage control. This is because he doesn't really have lasting hitboxes to cover getup options very well, but he does have an amazing corner game. When he opponents in the corner, Sephiroth really gets to make the most out of his range. His hitboxes can no longer be weaved around, which forces his opponent to deal with the hitboxes themselves. This is where his low short hop again becomes really strong, where he can do empty landing mix-ups to really mix up his timing, and as well approach his opponent to get the neutral air pressure. All in all, his opponent is forced to constantly deal with the hitboxes and really guess at what Sephiroth is going to do, and with a wrong guess, Sephiroth can get an extremely early KO with his strong sweet spots. Altogether, his advantage is okay. It's nothing great, but depending on the matchup, it can really be very, very strong. Especially against floaties, his juggles become a lot stronger. Generally, I recommend figuring out in which matchup you are strongest where and capitalizing on that aspect, whether it be a juggle, offstage, ledge trap, or corner situation. Identify where you're strongest and focus on getting your opponent into that position. Again, looking at Sephiroth's disadvantage, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Without one-winged angel mode, it's definitely soft bar. However, as we noticed before, with one-winged angel mode, his weakness is largely compensated because of his extra double jump as well as increased air speed. He's not amazing at getting out of juggles. He doesn't really have the air speed to maneuver and doesn't have sweeping hitboxes to hit below him very well either. He generally has to rely on high commitment mix-ups such as down air and up B to get out of a disadvantage situation, which is not the prettiest. His air speed, being as slow as it is, doesn't really do much for him either. His offstage is very similar. He has ways to get back to the stage, however, they're mix-ups. If Sephiroth gets red on his recovery, it's often curtains. I wouldn't call his up B weak, however, it's definitely exploitable with its long startup as well as its inherent weakness to characters with a counter. Many characters can counter his up B very easily, and characters with more aerial mobility can often weave around his offstage hitboxes and then punish the startup of his up B. If Sephiroth makes it back to the ledge, we get to his best aspect though, which is his anti ledge trap. Sephiroth is amazing at getting off the ledge, especially compared to other characters. Sephiroth is great at getting off the ledge due to his stage pin, long range, as well as his counter, and finally, of course, in one-winged angel mode, his extra double jump. Overall, this really compensates for a lot of his disadvantage. He really just needs to make it back to the stage, and from there, he's in a really good position. Even when he's in a juggle, he can often make it back to the ledge, and from there, has a relatively easy time getting off the ledge, forcing his opponent to respect his range, as well as his multiple double jumps and stage pin. Timing mix-ups. Stage pin timing mix-ups. There you go. Altogether, similar to the advantage state, you have a disadvantage that is very, very match dependent. If you can make it to the ledge, you're doing well. If you can make it from a juggle to the ledge, you're doing very well too. If neither of those are possible, then it's looking like a rough matchup where either you can get juggled for a long time or gimped relatively easily. In short, not everyone can punish his offstage or his juggle weaknesses, but when they can, it's really rough for Sephiroth. Overall, I would say that Sephiroth is very fundamental spaced. However, he's a little bit different from other fundamental spaced characters because of how far he takes the paradigm of slow startup, long range. Similarly to Shulk, he doesn't really live interaction to interaction and has to focus a lot on strategy to prevent his opponent from even getting into a good situation in the first place. It's not about going with the flow, it's about having a strong predefined plan. 
His advanced state can be great and he can get amazing reward off of minor reads in advantage state. By getting these reads, he limits his opponent's options, which further complements his coverage and makes him even more oppressive. I can see a lot of potential for Sephiroth for players who like to have a coverage-based methodical game plan, which really opens up a lot of reads, and both of these things just feed into each other very, very well. As for you, if you want to further define your own Sephiroth game style, I really recommend looking into his specials. I didn't really talk about Neutral B and Side B too much in this guide, because I don't really see a place for them in his standard game plan. Side B often leaves a lot to be desired in terms of direct punish, and Neutral B is just a little bit slow. If you want to further define the way that you play Sephiroth, then I recommend looking into these moves and what they can do for you. I think they have a lot of potential, and if you really experiment with them, you can really define your personal Sephiroth playstyle. I hope this gives you a great starting point for your Sephiroth gameplay. And let me know, who do you want to see next? You can message me on Discord or even on Twitter, links for that are down below. Or of course you can post your favorite character down in the description below and I will give it a look. It's going to be all for now, stay smart.